inside so long I've lost sight of right and wrong When you left an open door I couldn't help but explore So I took off with no plan Thinking I could find a friend Hands. I hope this moment never ends It feels so cold out on the road and on my own But when you can't go, no strings attached, no looking back from When I was a kid, I would spend hours reading novels that allowed you to choose your own adventure. My favourite example was a series called Fighting Fantasy, written by Ian Livingstone and Steve Jackson. And if Steve Jackson rings a bell, he's the same person that co-founded Games Workshop and helped bring Warhammer to the world. The Fighting Fantasy series used that choose-your-own-adventure format and combined it with dice rolling and some elements of character creation. I would spend hours with them. If you're not aware of the format, you read a passage from the text and then decide what you do next. It could be through a dice roll in a combat situation, or even just simply picking another number of a text to move to and read on. Sometimes you'd get to the end of the novel and win, or other times along the way you would just die and then start again. And the reason I love them so much is that they simply felt limitless. It was like no other book I'd read before. And now, of course, there were only about 400 options in most of these books, which meant, of course, they weren't limitless. But the fact that it gave that impression is what stuck with me. So why is my reading history relevant to this video? Well, quite simply, Road 96 is a choose-your-own-adventure. And from my point of view, what Johan Fanis and the team have achieved is remarkable. Oops, I said my opinion right at the start. Well, there it is. I suppose I better back it up now. Hey guys, it's Roy McCoy and welcome to this video. And now it's my job to explain exactly why I found this remarkable. Before I continue, I want to say a big shout out to my friend Jay from Discord who actually put me onto this game. If truth be told, this one had slipped under the radar, as so many indie games do. And if it wasn't for him, I never would have pursued the code. I'm so glad I did, and I want to say a big thank you. And that's the sad truth, that many of these games do slip under the radar, and I really hope this one doesn't. I really hope this one gets the attention that it deserves. If you do fancy chatting more about video games like this, do join me on the Discord. I'll put the link in the description. And please remember to like this video as it does help it to grow, and I really want this video game to be out there. Now enough of that shameless plug, let's talk about the game. Now considering this game is basically a story-driven adventure, I'm not going to ruin it for you. I don't want to spoil it, but I'm going to give you a vague idea of what you're getting into. The year is 1996, and the game is set in a country called Petria, which is controlled by a totalitarian regime under a person called President Tyrak. At the start of your first playthrough, you're asked some of your preferences. For example, who you like to travel with, why you like to travel, why you like watching films, and also what you would do if you lived under a totalitarian regime. And then you take control of one of a group of missing teenagers. And effectively, what you have to do is move north to Road 96 and escape the country. The game is a procedurally generated choose your own adventure style, and effectively you move from one interaction to another via either hitchhiking, taking a taxi, taking a bus, or walking. The different interactions with characters will appear at different times, which effectively promises that no two playthroughs will be exactly the same. The choices you make seem to have an impact on what comes next, or indeed the outcome of your story. As I say, you need to make your way north to escape the country, but along the way you could get captured by the police, killed, or actually manage to escape. Now one playthrough of the entire game will take you around three and a half to four and a half hours, depending on how much you actually like to explore. But you're not just taking control of one character for that entire time. In fact, the game is split into seven episodic structures, which just means you can play it episode by episode. I enjoyed that because half an hour and investment in the title meant that I didn't just have to sit at my computer for a four and a half hour sitting to appreciate it. In each episode, you take control of one of the different missing teenagers, and the events that occurred in your previous episodes will have an impact. There are references to things you've done as different characters or events that went off, and the way that that's delivered makes it feel so inclusive and so real. Now, as I said, I've played this game four times. The first time was a simple playthrough, the second time was to take advantage of a new game plus, the third time was just to see if the initial game was different, and the fourth time is because I realised that none of the footage in the previous three playthroughs I'd actually recorded. 
because I'm an idiot. But never once in those four playthroughs did I actually feel bored. I enjoyed them, I saw different things, I made different choices. For example, in one I chose to save a girl and the next time I chose to do nothing. The first time I backed the protests of the country and the second time I backed the voting of the country. And it did seem to have impacts. The different episodes are linked by a talk show called The Sonia Show, more about Sonia in a moment. And at the start of each new episode, she delivers The Sonia Show, giving a summary of what happened in a previous episode and also allows you to pick which teenager's journey you go on next. She also gives you an idea as to the state of the country. For example, in the ones that I chose the voting options, the opposition leader's popularity seemed to rise, whereas in the other one when I chose to protest, the people who abstained from voting became the majority. The point is that my choices actually in this example felt like they mattered. I think what makes this game so absolutely brilliant is the characters that you meet along the way. There are a few main characters that you need to meet. First of all, there's Zoe, a teenager who's trying to cross the border as well. Then there's Stan and Mitch, a couple of idiotic criminals who seem to blunder every robbery they undertake. Then there's John, a truck driver. Fanny, a policewoman. And then there's Alex, a 14-year-old hacker and genius. Jared, a rather creepy taxi driver, and Sonia, who is the local celebrity and host of The Sonia Show. And on top of that, there's also some side characters that you meet like Adam, Sonia's driver, and Robert, the leader of the Black Brigade's terrorist organization. The thing I loved about the story and the characters is that each one of them has some kind of development. So at first, as I say, you meet John, a grisly truck driver, but he turns out to be a really nice guy with a sad backstory. And it is the building and creation of the backstory that you find along the way that makes this game so impactful. Everybody has a reason for doing what they're doing as they lead up to the 1996 elections. Zoe becomes more than just a normal teenager. Sonia, as she seems shallow at first, has an also tragic backstory, something that haunts her. And each one of the characters has something that links them in some way. Now, I'm not going to go any further into the story in any way, shape or form, but just safe to say that the choices that you make and the people that you meet are truly impactful. As for the setting of Petria, it kind of reminded me of somewhere like Arizona or Nevada. The majority of accents were from the US, although there were some other accents, like there was an Australian guy chatting, there was an English guy, and there was also a couple of people from Birmingham in the middle of England, which was an unusual surprise. The developer's Digix Art? Is that how you say that? D-I-G-I-X-A-R-T? Digix Art? have said that their story is based on films by Tarantino, the Coen brothers, and Bong Joon-ho. And it also comes from the director who brought us Valiant Hearts and Memories Retold. So if these kind of impactful story-driven adventures are something you look for, this is definitely something to look at. What the director, Johan Fanis, has managed to do is give me that same limitless feeling that was present in the fighting fantasy novels. Yes, I know that technically nothing is limitless. And I've seen figures of around 140,000 different pathway marks quoted around the internet. But the simple truth is, there is enough here for you to do the thing several times. In my four playthroughs, yes, I saw repeated scenes, but sometimes they played out differently. For example, in one playthrough, Fanny the cop decided to release a teenager, and in another, she took him into the station. Sometimes I helped someone, other times I didn't. And then at other times, I found myself in completely different situations, something I wasn't prepared for, something I had never seen before. In other words, there is plenty to see and do here and it will keep you occupied more than just one playthrough. Especially if you go onto the New Game Plus where you can carry over some of the skills and the progression with the characters that you've achieved in your previous playthrough. Certain characters will give you certain skills, for example, Sonya will give you more luck and Jared will give you a bit more of intuition. But what makes this game magical is that story and the characters you meet, but it's also the visuals. I mean, look at them. It reminds me so much of something like Firewatch. It is absolutely sensational to look at. There always seems to be something to discover in each individual area. Now, I often hear these words vibe check flipped around, and sometimes I get it, but sometimes I don't. People talk about vibe checks they get in games when they can just look at things for hours. But I have to say, in Road 96, there were simply moments that I couldn't turn away from. They were absolutely stunning, especially when you're walking over the peak of a mountain or you're just riding through the desert. On top of the visual art, there were some genuinely moving and emotional moments. I felt so many emotions playing through this game. There was fear. There was sadness when you're empathizing with the troubles of people like John or Sonya. And there was pure humor when you're meeting the bumbling criminals that were Stan and Mitch. These people were incompetent at the highest order. Mitch, give me that back for the loot. 
the bag? I thought you had it. And that tension came again when you were crossing the border. There were multiple different ways you could cross, be it in the back of a truck, or taking a test to get a foreign workers permit, or heading over the border with a coyote. The tension was actually palpable. On top of all the praise, the limitless feeling, the beautiful graphics, the amazing story, and the interesting characters that you meet, I have reserved special praise for something that will come now. The soundtrack and audio to this game is insanely good. I would say that this soundtrack is one of my favorite ever soundtracks for the game. It is tailored and created for the experience. Many of the tunes that you listen to can be collected in the form of tapes that you pick up from characters along the way. This is for you, to remember this moment. And I have to say, the soundtrack and songs that I heard just blew me away. And likewise, the effects they've used for the speakers are also really well thought out. For example, at one point you put a Walkman on, and the person speaking to you becomes muffled when speaking. Also, on the Sonia show, Sonia's presentation is clear, but when she's interviewing a police officer, it's obvious that he hasn't been mic'd up, and therefore his audio is lower and mumbled. The only other thing really to talk about was that occasionally you come across little side games. For example, you can play a game that's like Pong, or you can play Air Hockey, Connect Four, and even Tank. There's also some randomization to certain elements of conversation that takes me back once more to that fighting fantasy series. If you haven't worked out by now, I absolutely love this game, and anybody that enjoys story-driven adventures, this is something to look for. If you're a person that loves Valiant Hearts or Memories Retold, if you like Firewatch or any kind of walking simulator, check this out. Now, I did mention there were a couple of flaws, but there was nothing game-breaking. Sometimes you'd see a bit of clipping, and maybe a finger going through a bar, or a car going through itself. And once or twice on my fourth playthrough, Sonia seemed to interview the same police officer twice, which kind of made me think, I've heard this before. But it was a slightly different interview, so maybe that was just in the game's plan. But apart from that, this game is pretty damn solid. Well, at least on my playthroughs they were. I'm sure with any kind of procedural generated game and with everybody's story being a little bit different, there will be things that people notice along the way. Maybe a repetition here or there, but for me this game ran well. So in conclusion, I enjoyed this game immensely. I enjoyed my experience and it's something I'm gonna stream and play a bit more of. If you wanna catch that, check me out on Twitch at RealRoyMcCoy. And do remember to join our Discord if you've got any more questions about this game, feel free to ask me in the comments here or indeed in Discord. But from me today, all it leaves me to do to say is thank you very much for watching, and this is Roy McCoy, out!